We begin today with the recap of President Biden's State of the Union address and what it means to politics across the country and here in Jersey. Joining us to talk about that are our passionate pair of partisans, the popes of punditry, Republican Chris Russell, co-founder of Checkmate Strategies, and Leroy Jones, chairman of the State Democratic Committee. We know them as Russell and Jones. Gents, welcome back to Chatbox. Great Thanks, to David. be here, as always, David. Good to see you, Chris. You too. So let's begin with uh, the State of the Union and get quick reactions. Uh, Chris Russell, let's start with you. Hey, listen, the State of the Union is a, is a, is a great stage for any president. They get to command the, the probably the largest audience that they'll get at one time on uh, television. I think they said over 30 million people. Uh, and uh, so, you know, there's a lot of planning and preparation that goes into it. And I thought the president... You know, for his purposes, gave gave a good speech. He showed he was energetic. He showed he was had a little fight in him. Now, whether he was uh, telling the truth all the time is a whole other story. Um, from from my standpoint, there's a lot uh, lacking in the speech. He still has a country with 71 percent of the people thinking it's going the wrong direction. So he had work to do. But uh, these things are always about expectations, and I thought he probably exceeded his expectations. So for him, I thought I'm sure they thought it was a good night. I'm sure Leroy probably agrees. Chairman, I guess that was almost a decent review from uh, your Republican counterpart. What were your thoughts of the speech? Well, actually, uh, Chris's review was much better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, you know, I thought I was just getting ready to kind of like counter everything he said. Right. Uh, like to keep you off balance, uh, right? I would have to agree with him. I think the president uh, made a good showing. Uh, I think he talked about, uh, you know, where we were going as a nation, and it gave that zeal and that gravitas that he has uh, commanded uh, over the last several months. It's been a, uh, you know, a good several months, uh, you know, in terms of uh, what the uh, the nation has been uh, doing in terms of uh, growing its infrastructure, uh, you know, taking care of uh, and addressing, uh, you know, the uh, issue of inflation through the Inflation Reduction Act. So uh, all in all, it was a solid uh, presentation, um, you know, a little bit of rancor from, uh, you know, some of the MAGA uh, Republicans. But uh, all in all, I, I think a good night for Joe Biden. You know, I, I was reminded back in, I guess it was 2009, early in the Obama administration, where during a State of the Union, uh, a congressman yelled, you lie. And that guy got censured, literally censured by, by the House. And this week, I mean, if they had rotten tomatoes, I, I feel like they would have thrown them at, at the president. Let me get your reaction to, to the tone. Let's, let's start with you, Chris. Well, listen, I mean, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the tone and tenor in Washington has been uh, corrosive for years. I mean, listen, we had a Speaker of the House and Nancy Pelosi who stood behind the President of the United States, whether she likes him or not, and tore the speech in half. I mean, if that, that if that wasn't one of the more childish things I've seen, I mean, I, my daughters are 15 and 12. I would we'd have a talk if they acted that way. Right. Hmm. So I, I think in the, in the sense that there are Republicans who got baited by Joe Biden and they did and acted inappropriately and they did. Um, Democrats like Nancy Pelosi and others have set the tone and done the same. So I don't think this is a, a Republican problem. I think it's a Republican and Democrat problem. And I think it's a political problem. The culture is toxic and uh and this is what you get. You know, it's one upsmanship, unfortunately, in the in the wrong direction. Well, this week, for sure, it was Republicans who were uh, demonstrating their vocal opposition. What did you think of the tone, uh, Chairman? I, I thought it was uh, somewhat disgusting. Um, you know, I think Chris uh, you know, kind of laid it out. I, I, I happen to believe that um, Washington, uh, you know, has uh, to set a, uh, a an ugly tone. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, its decorum uh, and respect uh, of the office of president. Um, you know, I don't necessarily agree with uh, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, outbursts, at, which leads other people to feel that uh, it's okay to do that. It's a display of, uh, of a lack of uh, decorum and respect, not only to the president of the United States, not only to uh, the joint session of Congress, but more importantly, the people of this country deserve more. All right, I want to play uh, a little portion of the speech that a lot of people uh, were talking about this week. Uh, let's play that and then we'll come and talk about it a little bit. So tonight, let's all agree, and apparently we are, let's stand up for seniors.
Stand up and show them. We'll not cut Social Security. We will not cut Medicare. Those benefits belong to the American people. They earned it. And if anyone tries to cut Social Security, which apparently no one's going to do, and if anyone tries to cut Medicare, I'll stop them. I'll veto it. Chairman, that was some fancy footwork right there by the uh, uh, president who had the, the crowd heckling him, and then he got them both to stand up together. That's, uh, you know, that's obviously uh, leadership. Uh, you know, Joe Biden has been um, a, um, a strong uh, fixture in Congress, excuse in the Senate. Uh, the the uh, served as uh, vice president for two terms under Barack Obama. Uh, you know he has relationships that are respected. Uh, you know and uh, those uh, extremists who uh, uh, decide to uh, exert that uh, kind of uh, unnecessary and uh, displeasurable um, uh, behavior, um, you know were obviously shamed by the unified. Uh, uh, approach uh, around the uh, American seniors, and Joe Biden used that extremely wisely. Chris, the the president um, has not helped really his own uh, his own argument about whether or not he is addled uh, enough at, or addled and, and unable to handle. Uh, the rigors of the presidency, which I guess is part of the lowered expectations that accompanied him to this speech. But that was a pretty engaged Joe Biden right there, no? Well, listen, and said, he set up a straw man and, and they took the bait. Like I said, the, the problem is what he's saying is false. The, the Republican position in Congress, and he knows it and he even conceded it, is not to cut Social Security and Medicare. Uh, that's been, Speaker McCarthy's been very, very clear about that. So, you know, he's talking about a handful of people who may have said something that they want to do. It's not the Republican position, and he knows it. And, and frankly, Joe Biden's been in, in Washington for 50 years while Social Security has gotten less and less solvent, more and more in debt. So to hear him up there trying to blame Social Security's ills on other people or, or put his head in the sand about how bad it is, it's, it's laughable. And I think that's probably what got him the reaction, and he used it to his advantage. And, but to your point about his expectations, you know, it's, it's uh, he has he is dealing with that. And there's a poll that came out, I think, last week. It was a Associated Press. So it wasn't like a, a right wing poll. So only about 37 percent of Democrats want him to run again. And a lot of them cited his age and his cognitive abilities. And I think that's something they have to deal with when you only have a little more than a third of your own party members saying we want our president back. It's a problem. Let me move on here, though, and uh, talk a little bit about what's coming up in 2023, which is uh, proving uh, to be potentially a momentous year in New Jersey politics. If anybody decides that they're going to run, a lot of people are, are dropping out. What's going on, Chris Russell? Listen, I, it, every legislature, uh, I think at some point, goes undergoes change and turnover. I think you're seeing the combination of retirements and, and the a redistricting year where things move around. Uh, different leadership in different counties. Um, and as Leroy knows, I mean, that's a big part of New Jersey politics, what happens behind the scenes. Um, and it's just, it's uh, kind of, we're coming all together into this larger than normal retirement turnover in the legislature. Uh, good people who are leaving serve the, serve the state well for a long time. Um, but, but new blood's not the worst thing. And I think uh, it's going to be good for the voters to see. And I think, you know, we have a, a map we can compete in, uh, unlike we've had for the past 20 years. And I think Republicans are going to look to pick up on the gains we made in 21, which were substantial, and uh, and make a run at uh, as close to majority as we've had in a long time, if not get there. So right now, I think that's the goal by Republicans, keep the 21 momentum and, and make a hard push. Chairman, what do you think? Um, these retirements and folks deciding not to run, is that a good sign for, for your party? Yeah, well, uh, I would agree with Chris, Dave. Uh, you know, I think this is the Let me just say, before you go on too much, you guys are agreeing way too much. But go ahead, Chairman. Got, I'm sorry to interrupt with, you. You got to come up with some better content, man. <laughs> I got <gotcha>. you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm sorry. You were saying. But look, uh, you know, Chris is right. I mean, this is the natural evolution uh, in, in government, particularly the uh, the legislature. There's been, uh, you know, some giants in the legislature that... Uh, you know, have uh, decided to uh, to call it quits, to retire. Uh, they have uh, made their mark. They have, uh, you know, contributed contributed to the state, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, a major way, um, you know, through the uh, process of legislation. And I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it gives them an opportunity to pass the baton 
uh, to a different generation, new leadership, uh, different vision. And, uh, you know, that is something that uh, helps develop and mold not just my party, but both parties. But, you know, uh, uh, Chairman, you've got a big potential fight coming up um, between Senators Gill and Cody. Um, what's going to be the ramifications of that, do you think? Or you think somebody's going to decide to not run? Chris, you want to take that question? <laughs> I think Leroy's going to plead the fifth on this one. Listen, from my standpoint, uh, I'm happy to sit back and, and chew some popcorn while I watch Leroy deal with all these problems in his party. I'm all for civil war. Let it bring it on, the whole thing. The, so, woes, but the, woes, of a, the woes of a county chair. Look, uh, they will, there will be a process uh, that we, uh, we go, to, go through to uh, decide uh, where we land in terms of um, you know, who is, uh, who is uh, part and parcel of the organizational, organization's uh, team uh, from Senate Assembly uh, and all the other uh, county officers that are up in, um, in Essex County as well. Um, so the outcome is uh, you know, soon to be determined. Close to home, so he sidestepped a little there, Chris. But, you know, in your party, you've got Sam Thompson complaining that people are trying to oust him because he's 87 years old. Right. Hey, listen, I mean, Senator Thompson served for a long time. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's entitled to, to speak his mind, of course. I, I think ultimately the, the voters will decide, as they always do. Uh, and in this case, you know, if there's a, uh, someone else who wants to challenge him, he's been in the uh, legislature a long time. They're right to, they have a free right to do that, and, and the voters will, will make the decision. So, again, I don't think, um, you know, everyone will run on their merits like Senator Thompson and everybody else, Republican or Democrat. And, again, the great thing about the country and about our, our way of life here is that the people get to decide. So uh, primary season should be more eventful than normal, um, and, and I guess that makes for good content for your next show, David. Thanks. <laughs> See, already I'm improving the content, Chairman. So, <laughs> Thank you. So... Um, you know, there, there's still months to go uh, be, before the primaries, not to mention the, the general. Um, but what, what are going to be the implications of what happens in 23 going forward for the gubernatorial race? I think it, uh, it, it becomes, uh, you know, a uh, stage setting, um, you know, phenomenon that yeah. uh, will work its way uh you know through 24. i mean let's not forget uh there is a, a presidential contest and a congressional contest once again yeah. in 24. but uh you know it will uh you know pretty much establish uh, the foundation for the uh the upcoming elections and uh and that's the process you know the practice that both chris and i are in uh, you know, putting those building blocks together for our respective parties so that as we move through these various election cycles, uh, we're uh, primed and uh, ready to go for what's before us in 2025. Chris, what are the big issues that Republicans are going to try to be bringing to the forefront in 2023? Are you still on, avail on uh, uh, affordability? Absolutely. Listen, affordability is the number one issue uh, facing voters that they, that they care about. Um, you know, Governor Murphy, um, you know, for a lot of talk, has not been able to bring down taxes and, and they continue to rise. The cost of living continues to go up. Uh, of course, that's been only made worse by the, the Joe Biden inflation from Washington. So, yeah, New Jerseyans are feeling the squeeze. Then you also have other issues like crime. Uh, you see a lot of uh, these car break ins and car thefts, and, and that's like a regular thing on the news every time now. And, and you also see things like school curriculum and, and a lot of parents engaging in school board elections and in school board meetings because they're not happy with what's being taught or how it's being taught. Uh, I think all these issues are, are issues that lean towards Republicans. I, I'll take all three of those in a head-to-head in a -head matchup with the Democrats. So you know, we're looking forward to, to the fight. Is that, right. uh, is that what was expected in the, uh, the red wave that never happened, Chris, all those issues? I'm, I, I'm, in 2021 was a pretty good red wave in New Jersey, so we're looking to finish it off. 2025, um, here we 2021. come. 2021, they're going to live off the 2021 experience uh, <laughs> as long as they can. But this is 2023, Chris. So I understand. Uh, I'm looking for a good year this year. Let's look ahead. To come after that. Let's, look, let's look ahead, not backwards. All right, on that note. I'm sure that's the way you'd like it. <laughs> on that note, Chris Russell, Leroy Jones, always good to see you guys. Thanks for coming on with us. Great seeing see you, you guys. both. See you next time. Take care, guys.